I've elected to strap my bad guy hat on this morning, and we've got uh, some Grease Fang here looking to floop some Parahelions into play. We've got a few ways to get the big boat into our graveyard. We've got Season Hollow Blade, we've got Knives off of Ledger Shredder, we got Knives off of Rafine, and we've got Digital Only Diviner of Fates here. So not only does this connive when it enters play, but it says whenever you discard one or more cards, seek a card that shares a card type with one of the discarded cards. Which is actually kind of interesting because uh, it can actually let Esper Sentinel search up Parahelion since these are both artifacts is cute. And then we've got kind of Inquisitor Captain tying the, the whole thing together as a little bit of card advantage at the top end. So let's go ahead and pop on into some games with this and uh, see how this pile feels. Gray Bear. This deck is very quiet, crazy. Has anybody tried Winona, by the way? She's legal again, right? Guildgate Godless Shrine Explorer. You have my intention to put it. Another guild gate. So actual factual just gates it looks like. There's a card named Winona that's legal, but it's not my Winona. Do 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 Okay, speaking of boats. Discarding a spell there meant that Diviner of Fates gets out of uh, burn down the gates range for next turn. Gates of Blaze. Which is nice. With Ledger Shredder, Grease Fang, and Parahelion in hand, I think it is a... Probably, if we draw a land, we'll probably tap land plus pass next turn with attacking. And then on turn five, we can go Ledger Shredder into Grease Fang connive away the Parahelion and then bring it back. A non-land card activate only once. Huh. Is that playable in standard? Or alchemy? Alchemy's got to be too powerful for this, right? That's an interesting design. It's a tapped, tapped basic, but it draws a card that's guaranteed to be a spell. Feels bad, man. So I assume we're gonna lose one of these two. Probably Grease Fang. <laughs> oh God, this triggers on Thought Seas too. I'm gonna be honest, Chet. I didn't realize, usually these types of effects don't get templated as, uh, don't get templated as opponent's cards too. That's kinda, kinda excellent. <laughs> Actually, this might realistically be a 
hard cast, uh, hard cast Perihelion game, huh? Obviously, we're just gonna seek another land out here, but I kinda wanna hit my land drops. We get to trick through our deck a little bit here, too. Gates of Blaze will be a little bit annoying, but we kinda gotta get through that. Going on, Sager. Thanks for the 27 months. Welcome back. Our opponent's deck seems really good when we don't draw any spells. Uh, no, we've played Historic the last couple of days. We haven't run into anyone yet. I, I'd imagine she's just not competitive with her change. Rita, thank you for the 21 months of Prime. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Dahlia is symmetrical. That's weird. My deck was like, ah, you want to draw a spell, a eh, Hogland? How about a second Thalia? It's a spell. Game one rest in peace, super healthy format. They're gonna get to start, uh, they have like three guaranteed spell draws just hanging out on the table, huh? I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we lose this game. These are two more guaranteed spell draws. Yeah, so they're, so they're on empty right now, but they're guaranteed to have some gas next to it. We're just hoping it's like more rested pieces and circuitous roots and less, uh, or thought seasons, I suppose. Less gates of blaze and finishers. We did not cast a Parahili on last turn because it cost nine because Thalia is symmetrical. These silly non-fire design cards. Am I dead yet? One big boat, please. We technically have what we need to crew this next turn. Thalia and then Glass Pool may make the Esper Sentinel. We're gonna win this game despite drawing 10 lands in uh, 18 cards or so. All right, we need to draw something that can crew the boat. My flames burn beyond perception. So you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do, 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 do. All right, come on. A non thalia creature. Everybody in the boat, toot toot. Oh, 
<laughs> Is this good here? Or do I rather have Skyclave for the rest in peace? You're probably gonna have more rest in peace style effects post board, right? He's having large booties seems good. How many creature we at? We're at 33 creatures. This needs... This only needs 20, so we can board down creatures if we want. I don't know what I want to trim here, though. Esper, Sentinel, and Thalia seem pretty good. They've got a lot of non-creature cards. I almost want to just click Submit. Feels like it'd be bad not to put in at least some Skyclaves, though. What's going on, Great Bear? Thanks for the 29 months of Prime. Welcome back. Archon would make all their non basics come into play tap. That's just true, you know. I put a couple of Skyclaves and trim a couple of Ledger Shredders. We're not we're not double spelling too consistently in our opponent. Our opponent made that either. The, the Esper Sentinel and the Thalia is probably up there for just like most rude curves you could have in this game. Like, what if you had to pay three mana for your Blood Chief's Thirst? How would, how would that make you feel? Okay, turning Parahelion into an Esper Sentinel also feels pretty good. Kind of cuts both ways nicely. This is not a gate, so if they have a red source, they cannot gate to blaze me this turn. And get rid of this rest in peace. Again, Shredder plus Sentinel. Uh, I actually want to Shredder Sentinel rather than Diviner, because I want... I guess they both could be a chance to land. Hitting, triggering the Shredder this turn seems pretty good, though. Content to trade two damage for one damage here, I think. And then with Grease Fang in hand, especially, happy to ditch this uh, Sentinel and hopefully find a Parahelion for next turn. And then I think I'm actually keeping this other Sentinel in hand because I would like to have a chance to find. Uh, to find a Parahelion when we uh, can Ive it away. So we've got Grease Fang rolled up here.
attacking with both here so that we can just push more damage and get more knives in. We don't need two rats. We only get to draw one card with Diviner of Faith, but it's important that I discard two spells. That way this can be a 3-3 three, three to attack past their 2-2. Two, two. Just packing it in. Yeah, the Diviner was very impressive there. A lot of, a lot of card advantage. Diviner might be the best Baldur's Gate card. Was it a Baldur's Gate card? No, that was the... That was SNC, right? Color's not quite cooperating there. Keep this. How different would magic feel if you could snap? It would involve my opponents not taking nearly as long. They would actually feel compelled to concede when they're infinitely behind. Maybe. I'm gonna lead on Ledger Shredder here because Thalia is not likely to super disrupt a Land War Elves deck and if they play two spells, like it'd been the Parahelion. Sick. All right, can I have me into a land, bud? Never been so excited to see a burning tree of a Siri in my life, Jet. Hey, brick for one, maybe two turns here. More than that, things get a little sketchy. Classic mulligan to five and then get stuck on two lands. And truly big brained intellectual gaming experience. Not that our deck's particularly intellectual to begin with. We just jam paralyons and grease fangs on people's throat. bottom two lands. I was correct to bottom the lands. We had two two mana plays. We kept a combo piece.
Just dead. You only, eight, only have three blockers. This only attacks for 13. Yep, the Esper Sentinels bring in Skyclaves. I think Skyclaves better than Fragment Reality. Could go either way. Skyclave is only worse if you have two lands. I mean, naturally, when will we ever get stuck on two lands? Expecting, expecting that your third lane drop is not really unreasonable. You'll have that. You'll have that in most of your games. My body is ready to not have double white to cast the Skyclave on three this game. That's 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 almost assuredly where this story is headed. Stop me! Stop me if you've heard this one before. What's going on, Shaggy? Thanks for almost an entire year. Appreciate the prime re up. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Early after that screw, we're due for a flood. You get it. You understand. Lands, double white. Two, three. Beautiful chat, just beautiful. It's beautiful. Do do do. We are gonna flood out. We're drawing lands. Mine's out of here. It's uh, pretty incredible game of Magic the Gathering here so far. Both teams tried super hard. Well, well fought on both sides. You can really, you can really feel it. How, how competitive the game was. I want some fragment reality on the draw. Trimethalia. We're winning. I don't know how much we're gonna play this one. This deck is uh is kind of dry to play as it is to dr dry to play against. We're not really we're not really making a lot of very interesting choices. We're just kind of like derp derp do the thing and then they die. Probably fine. Hollow blade blocks okay. Especially when we have uh diviner of fates afterwards to turn the cards it's discarding into other new cards. No plays on one or two, eh?
Koko? Koko? Magic's fun. This I know because the Twitch chat tells me so. Deal. I accept. The chat sometimes lucky. Rag meant the reality. Oh, there goes Ember Cleave. Do 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 do. You better lose yourself in the land war, else you are gonna get a 1-1 one -one on the board. Do 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 The sword is a plowshares that hits artifacts too. Yeah, kinda. You squint at it. You're feeling better, anaphylactic. I I enjoy lifestyle games in general, but it's definitely really easy to fall into into traps where you just like play them even when you're not having fun. It's good to be able to take control of your life and uh, make sure you're having fun with your hobby. Like me, I am having a ton of fun right now, missing my third land drop, going on six turns for two out of three games. It is an engaging and fun experience. It's my turn. This will be easy. You know, it's funny. When I experience a game like this, it really puts in perspective how stupid I was in my early 20s. Because chat, I am just getting mana screwed sitting here in my basement where I get to shrug and move on to the next land drop. I used to drive across the country to have this experience. Imagine getting in your car and driving 14 hours from the Midwest to New Jersey to get mana screwed twice. That was, that was the real. Looky, looking back at it, man. People, I wasn't the only one stupid enough to do that. There were a lot of people that used to do that type of shit. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good time. And I mean, and part of that too, it's not just about the game, right? Like those trips are about, about the people as well. And honestly, I think that's why, I think there was a lot of extra bitterness around magic as a game at the start of COVID especially, especially with the push towards Arena, because I think a lot of people realize they really don't like a blot about Magic as the game itself so much as they were just like, it was just a social thing for them to do. And Arena, Arena really kind of peels back away that element because there aren't really social aspects to this client. It's very much just you alone with the game. And when you're alone in the room with the game, you're like, oh no, what have I done? This is what I've been doing. Oh, not discarding a card. There's a reason why Commander is the most popular for me. Yeah, almost assuredly. Almost assuredly. Sad that we're just losing lands. Obviously, we're only getting a land back here. But I don't think I can afford to discard either of these. If they kill this, I need spells left over.
Definitely playing captain here. Ooh, captain, my captain. A ledger Shredder angle. I kind of like just extra Rafine. Feels like there's a good chance they kill it. It also gives me a connive here on attack, which is nice. I'll put a counter on this. just like actually doesn't do anything here because I get to discard a card and then seek another one. Thanks Fred. Appreciate you. Wait, this card's not legendary? Wait, and these stack, right? So if I have two of these, I discard one card and I seek two? That's kind of messed up, Jet. Right? Yeah, that's, that's exactly how that works. Oh. You duck. And now I get to attack with three things and draw three cards and discard three lands. L O L. I mean, I think our deck, se our deck seems incredibly fair and reasonable, Chet. It's just like pretty classic removal check gameplay, right? Like most of, most of modern magic design is removal check gameplay. What's going on, Jack Fury? Thanks for 27 months. If there's anything that's not okay with this shell that we're playing, it's definitely the, the Grease Fang portion, the like, Fair Esper creature portions like more than appropriate. And then like this is kind of the squeeze this deck does is that they've been like trying not to die to all of this this whole time. And then it's like surprise Barahelion! Everybody get in the car! Man, that was, uh, yeah, this deck just, hit, it hits from a lot of angles. It feels very difficult to keep up with this deck from a fair perspective. Just because, like, you have to, like, you have to, you have to, like, at all points, you have to respect the possibility that you're just going to get grease fanged. But then you also have to, like, not get ground out by, by, like, Diviner of Fate, Rafine, Inquisitor, Captain Package. Zaller, thank you for the 30 months. I appreciate the two and a half years. Welcome back. All right, how are we sideboarding here? Thalia seems fine. It blocks their two twos. Hermit might be a little bit awkward to hold up. What do I want out of the sideboard? Skyclave Apparition? Could be a Skyclave Apparition angle. Could also be an unlicensed Hearse angle. Cause they have like Croxas and Unholy Heats and making their making their Unholy Heats real bad is uh, is potentially good. Yeah, they still haven't nerfed Uro and Oko and stuff. Really, I really hope we get Uro and Oko back soon with uh, updated text boxes. I'd really like to play with those cards personally. Is it crazy to trim some of my rat package? But if I like trim one of each, that might be reasonable. 
Maybe we go down to two of each, like put in a couple of Skyclaves or a Scotch of Interaction. Because it feels like they're going to have more graveyard hate and stuff post board, right? Like more respect for it. Maybe that's, maybe that's giving too much credit to Magic Arena players. I don't think so, John. I think Field of the Dead is almost assuredly fine as printed. Uro's probably pushing it. I think Uro's probably a little bit too good for control decks. Field, field, I, field was like Winota. I think you could probably just unban that card with the base text to be fine. We've not hit the sound bug yet this morning in a half hour, but you've now cursed us. So when it happens, I'm gonna have to time you out, Marty. I didn't make the rules, but that's what they are. Okay. Hey, as far as spells go, Inquisitor Captain's one of our better ones. Well, they didn't have a removal spell there. If I just like hit Grease Fang, they basically die, right? Like a uh, loose Crux on their part. I mean, regular discard spells are fine in this matchup. All right, we can't play Thalia out because of Molten Impact looming, so we just gotta chill for now. They need one more card in the bin to uh, keep their Crocs. Uh... Cool, 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 cool. All right, so Croxa escapes. We discard Thalia. We'll Skyclave Apparition the Croxa. By that, I mean, let's just draw Grease Fang and kill them. Based on how they've played this game, boarding out some of my Grease Fang combo is definitely wrong, and I will be putting that back in if we have a game three. My my comment on the opponent having no respect for it, it turns out was very, very accurate. Put these under my hearse, that way I can get big and strong. Well, our Dreadhorde Arcade is too, yeah, so our hearse is super good here. Doing this to spend my mana for the turn. on to Thalia for now because I would like to cast two spells in a turn and trigger Ledger Shredder. Right, 
friends. And now we just fire up the hearse and uh, try and kill them into, right? Force the Sorkinus off the board. Out of these, we can connive them. Your thing, opponent. Prioritize taking the creature out of their bin, so that way, uh... Well, that attack left them dead to anything that could crew my hearse, but it didn't matter, because we bricked again. Um... game. Oh, what a bad joke. I don't think we have a catch-up mechanic from here. Bugged again for the extra little rub. A decent number of creatures. I'm gonna cut these Esper Sentinels, I think. All right, my combo back in. I mean, to be fair to them in Magic, the first season Pyromancer helps them draw subsequent Pyromancers, so... Makes sense to a degree. supposed to play a creature that could potentially attack next turn in case we draw land for Rafine. Not that we're gonna draw land so we've been incapable of drawing a third land today except when we flood out but it'd also be right to just get the hearse down ahead of their uh their discard spells.
Come on! Connive me into Perihelion and then draw land next turn. Dead. And I can assume they're gonna have their second fabled passage to exactly escape Croxa here. That's about how the morning's been going. All right, no fabled passage at least. We got that going for us. There's still one card off of escaping this. Second removal spell in response. Long tank, best possible play. Okay. Classic Magic Arena classic. Oh, speaking of best possible play, sometimes lucky. Wait, they picked the Croxa back up? I mean, sure. We're still playing this, obviously. I'm just surprised they picked it back up. I'm going to grab their land here, so that way, hack at their delirium. What's going on, patches? Happy Sunday. Yeah, but kind of the fact that we're like having so much resource variance and our deck full of connive cards is like extra icing on the cake. Cause like we're playing a pretty, like our deck is built around a variance reducing mechanic. The good news is, uh, because they picked the Croxa back up, they need two turns to escape this. This does three to us. And then it's not coming back till next turn, and we might just be able to race them in the air before then. Eight. This is a brick and this is a brick. They're dead. Kirby says. Doke. Look at my face, large and in technicolor, as I take the client and kick it into the trash can. And restart it back up here so we can have a little bit of audio. Just a little bit of audio chat as a as a treat this one time. Go right on, Bernie. Thanks for the brand new prank. There's a ton of great people on Twitch. You can send that to every month. Thanks for sending it this way this month and keeping me around. Morning. Oh, that's true. We did say that was Marty's fault. I got it. Dealing with royalty-free music on YouTube is a pain in the ass because even if you have the rights to stream some of it, there's people that go around and, like, claim that they own it. So you have to, like, fight challenges on YouTube. 
even if you're using stuff that you're you're legally allowed to. It's kind of just a giant pain. Oh, I should have played that on one after we drew it. This does not stop Perilion, so that's nice. Speaking of nice. Oh, it will put the rat into play tapped though, huh? Alright, so I'm gonna Rafine here. And then next turn we can rat bring the other thing into play and then crew with crew with our other cards. Okay, so Thalia and Esper Sentinel aren't very good here. Neither is Hermit. We bring in four Fragment Reality, four Skyclave Apparition. Click Submit. It's like eight cards that can interact with their creatures, but also interact with things like Rest in Peace and Graft Digger's Cage. Seems real good. blue source, but the rest of the hand's pretty good, so I'm gonna keep it. Nailed it. Never didn't have it. Easy game. Cleave Apparition. Rest in peace. Can you believe the audacity of this opponent to interact with us, chat? Interaction in my Magic the Gathering? Their board isn't particularly impressive that we've got going for us. Like, any of these things stick, we're okay for now. Speaking of, not particularly impressive. That's Shaw on the other Hollow Blade for now, I think.
Should be this here. Dang. It's fine. We got a ravine for a proactive play and then two reactive interactive elements. Fragment reality is a little bit worse here than it is in some other matchups just because they have a lot of good one mana cards in their deck, but that's what it is. Just kill this one, huh? He's like, plow your one drop. Like, that's probably the line with Skyclave hanging out in my hand. Just take my one for one. Uh, I don't know that I really have an opinion on Historic yet. TB, TBD. Here, great. Now the now the cards are really flowing. With second diviner of fate and a bunch of skycleave apparitions, we're in a pretty decent spot to play an interactive game now. We'll see what their collected company can fish up. Their skycleave apparitions notably can't hit Rafine here though, which is nice. They get some good linear elements. We'll need to Skyclave next turn. If they get interactive elements, we'll probably Diviner of Fate to get another one down. Hmm, they got a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I think I want to just take Valkyrie off the table. The potential for this card to kind of go crazy is high if we leave it in play. Definitely want to keep swinging here. Chip away at their life total and make this worse is ideal. I think I'm just discarding lands at this point. All of, all of my spells are pretty good. I feel like I need them as much as I would like a 1-1 counter here. They're Valkyrie. Okay, so they're out of gas. Sky claim the Valkyrie again. Right play last turn, so right play again this turn. Ship with Rafine. Now we can probably afford to ditch a Ledger Shredder, huh? Oh yeah, and Fragment Reality just cleans out the speaker or something else. So yeah, firmly in the driver's seat now. You know what they say, chat? Third Sky Claim Apparition's the charm. I'm just going to start swinging at this point. I would like to, uh, connive a bunch here. Why does it connive for every creature, Chet? Why, why does it draw three cards? 
I don't, I don't understand. Why does it get to draw three cards? That's fine. We can crunch the fourth Valkyrie here. No problem. Driving in my car. Beep, beep. This is, this has been our experience in a lot of our games so far. Like our game is kind of close and interesting. And then we draw a Parahelion combo and like the game is no longer close or interesting. Just draw, draw a couple of cards here real quick, Chip. I think this is lethal. It's probably lethal if we fragmented reality, the Speaker of the Heavens, but I also don't think it really matters. They live on, they live on one, right? They get to chump block here. Nope, they can't do combat math, so they're exactly dead. Good shot. I mean, they were dead anyways, but if they would have, if they would have blocked the Parahelion, they would have lived at one. Not that, not that they had a comeback mechanic from there. All right, I'm, I refuse to restart Arena every single match that we play, so we're just gonna have to play a couple more matches without audio. Sorry, sorry for the issue, but taking three minutes to restart the client in between every match is just too much. I'd rather just deal with mediocre audio. Walked into a win in an arena bug. Glad to see nothing truly changes. Ain't that the truth? Thanks for the uh, thanks for the over two years, Archangel. Good morning and welcome back. Sentinel is just a good magic card yet. This is a uh, attack with both make Sentinel a three three. And now, now this notably isn't even just pay one; it's pay Esper Sentinel's power. So like, if they want to cast the spell, they have to uh, pay three to not let me draw a thing. Oh, I guess this is a little scary. I'm letting them mill three more and they are a Grease Fang deck. Yeah, there's the, there's the Parahelion. We could just die here. Am I dead yet? Go call, go call. And it's hard to be too mad about this check because we're also doing this to people. So like, you know. It's fair game and all that jazz. This is that rat race I keep hearing about. Yes, exactly that. 
exactly that. Member chat, the historic ban list protects you from cards like Field of the Dead that are unfair. Martin, you're one of our old hexers. The fragment is big transmogrify energy. It's like better transmogrify actually, right? Because they like have to have actual cards in their deck to get and you could turn it into something way cheaper than one less. Oh, spe speaking of Hex, I'm sure there's a few old Hexers in chat. I know a lot of them hung out as we moved on to other games after that one died. Uh, Cryptozoic and Corey Jones are the ones that are making the DC comic books card game that's releasing this fall. I think it's supposed to be out in like the Q4. I knew, I knew that was a thing that was coming, but I didn't realize that that was, that was them until recently. Maybe I'm supposed to go for the full linear here. I could have gone Hollow Blade into Grease Fang, but I kind of tunnel vision interacting with them. what at least with burning tree emissary they went back and unbanned it say say what you will about going back and forth on things i think wizards biggest issue with their non-rotating formats is the fact that they don't revisit their ban list frequently enough so whenever they go back and actually unban things i always like to give them a little bit of a clap because that's the their one big failing in my opinion is how how long cards they are then surpassed by future designs just rot on ban lists I was going to say, I'm not sure I go for the Grease Fang here, but we drew a second one, so now I'm going for it. to be that you could like put down magic stone rotating formats for like six months and then come back to them and like still expect them to mostly be the same and that's just not the case anymore our opponent doing us a solid showing us why fatal push isn't a playable card in this format most decks yes and i get to leave up fragment and i have unlicensed to interact with their graveyard Yeah. Good stuff. I, mean, I wouldn't describe push as too fair. It's just not an answer that lines up well into the metagame, right? It's all about which which cards actually work 
against which threats you care about. And there's so many important three mana threats in this format that push just isn't good if you can't enable revolt trivially. have any interactive bits he says before drawing fragment reality one perihelion please never lucky Drop. Don't need a second season hollow blade. Starting next turn, we can hold up Fragment Reality in case they try to combo us. They have a window here to get us, but I think it was right to play our Diviner. They don't have white mana, they don't have a Parahelion in the bin yet. This is the part where they play Deadly Dispute and Citrus Supplier bins one and then we die. Oh, I guess they could. They could Faithless Looting, right? That's still legal in this format. Looting's legal, right? Uh oh. Uh oh. Now we'll now we'll hold up fragment. Looting is still legal for now, yes. For now? What do you mean? They would get rid of Faithless Looting? Why would they do that? This might be wrong, actually, because um, if they have a land, they can, can't stay away, the one that's in their bin, and then they get it. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to wait, actually. Okay, it worked out. We are actually in a bit of trouble here now, right? They have a mana, they can can't stay away their thing next turn. What gives me the most looks at a Parahelion for next turn? You wanna just attack twice for two more draws? Yeah, I could do that. I could also just dig for interaction. It's true. Maybe that's where we start. Do I wanna start with Diviner of Fates? Yeah, I think it's Diviner into attacking, right? We could find Fragment or we could find um, Hearse. All 
All right, sec. Easy, easy game, chat. No reason to hearse proactively here. We can just pass, and then when they go to can't stay away, we can get rid of it. All you have to do is be lucky. Not being unlucky is also a line that works. They put a bunch of boats in there. So I guess I'm exiling can't stay away plus Grease Fang. I've been hoping they don't have White Sword's second Grease Fang here. Want to thin a land or a creature out of my deck? I could turn Season Hollow Blade into a different creature. I think I'd rather thin a land, though. It's a shame we've been so bad at drawing our own boat. I can start with Inquisitor Captain so we could find something that draws a card. I guess I should just start by opening attacks, huh? I'm gonna attack with everything, so I wanna draw as many cards as possible here. Sec. Okay. Another hearse is lovely. It's my, it's my six, seven. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Second hers probably locks it up. Those that can have another portable hole into There's only two Parahelions in here. They have another portable hole into like White Source plus, what's it called? But just Skyclave Council Ship doesn't do it. Diviner of Fates is a very powerful magic card. All right, it's been two matches without sound. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the client so we can have a little bit of audio as a, as a treat. Just a, just a pinch, a scotch, you know. I look forward to taking two turns before the audio breaks again. Accurate. Your head is in the way of the wonderful Rowlet I came to see. It is hanging out back there. Hoo -hoo!
got some schemes, chat. We're scheming to make Esper Sentinel larger. Sentinel is a little less good against us. Uh, I think I'm actually discarding an extra Rafine here. I don't think I need a third one. Did Rowlet imprint on you while you were in the owl costume? Does it think you're its mother? Very possibly. I go ahead and discard a spell to this so that way um, it gets out of uh, deal three damage range. Yes, Esper Sentinel is definitely at its best in decks that can add extra attack to it. Hey, look, Chad, it's the Lightning Helix we played around. I appreciate the, yeah, here's a helix that doesn't do anything play there at the end. I actually just clicked submit against a control deck, right? I think it's a click submit angle. I think if they have graveyard hate, we just grind them out with our, our mediocre Esper beats. It feels weird, but I think I'm actually supposed to bottom the boat here. Post board, they're super likely to have graveyard heat. And or like a helix to kill the grease fangs. I think I just want like a bunch of individual quality things. Shit, I just need to stop expecting Magic Arena players to have any modicum of respect of reasonable play. I need to just keep our combo at all times and just shove it in. Giving them way, giving Magic Arena players way too much credit this morning. I think we're dead to that, right? Yeah, I'll take the play. Double Diviner is uh, wonderfully divine. T 
tail's end. Yep, you've uh, you've stifled my connive. Uh, that was a match of magic. Games were played, checkboxes were made, you know. Uh, when two shock lands, we go shock land tap, shock land untapped. And these are untapped on three and four. Hooblins. I think you shredder here because not only does it block this, but there's also a chance they double spell next turn, right? We are definitely getting double spelled. that they nerfed Winona in this format. It's very, very LOL energy. Take out our stuff that's good against non-creatures, bring in a bunch of removal spells. The removal spells are only okay here, but they're better than the non-creature stuff. Fader guy, thanks for the prime. Historic's definitely a real non-rotating format yet. A lot of a lot of people kind of just playing past each other here. And that and that includes us, right? Like a lot of a lot of what our deck is doing is hoping to just play past our opponent. All I'm saying, Fader Guy, if getting high rolled by Muxus is what got you to subscribe, then I super came out ahead on the Muxus high roll there. Never, never a third land shit. Do I normally play Historic? We do all arena, all arena 60 card constructed formats. So we kind of bounce around to what we're playing depending on, depending on how I'm feeling about different formats. We've mostly been playing Explorer and Historic lately. I think I think we're gonna try Alchemy as our second deck today. I haven't played any of that since their balance patch. Hey, Engineer, thank you for the tier three and thank you for the 10 months. If you wanna check out the stuff that I've been playing a bunch of lately, there's a playlist for each of Arena's constructed formats up on the front page of my YouTube channel. You gotta see what we play and how often there. No, the cube the cube's only ever up for a small amount of time. Third land might be too little too late here since it was tap chip. All right, let's see what Muxus hits here. This fragment reality might buy us the time we need. Let's let them matron first here and then we'll fragment the war chief. 
It's historic after the alchemy drops and changes. I really wasn't a fan of historic at all before the changes, so to set a low bar, I think it's better, but I don't I don't know if better actually means good or not. I was I was on vacation for the last week, so we've only been back for a couple of days. I've only played a handful of things so far. Hey, thanks for the almost four years, Boshek. Welcome back. Fragment of the reality. Oh, there goes War Chief. And we're one point of damage short of the boat being lethal next turn, right? The question is, can we survive the backswing? We'll have we'll have a few blockers here. Three to be precise, and so we're at 18. So maybe. Maybe. I'm saying, I'm saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do, 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 do. So they go Prospector into second Muxes, kind of digging for like a Cranko plus a Haste creature so they can kill us. But we're not, we're not dead on board currently. The question is what's going to happen with their second spin. I guess depending on what they get, they could even have a third spin potentially here as well. Yeah, it's definitely a huge risk investing in non-originating formats. Wizards Wizards has definitely shown us in the last few years that like non-rotating formats in Magic kind of don't exist anymore. Because Wizards Wizards kind of realized that um all right, we're dead. They have great going to Haster. Um, Wizards kind of realized they can monetize those players by like effectively soft rotating the formats by printing push stuff. Not, not to discourage you, but I also don't think Explorer is necessarily any safer from being effectively rotated than Historic is. It's kind of, it's kind of something that's endemic to all of Magic's non-rotating formats, not just Historic. Like we even, we even see Modern effectively rotating every two years as Modern Horizon sets release. So for the fifty-two months, Fizzy Dragon, welcome back. Yeah, I would I would bet that uh Pioneer Masters or Pi sorry, Pioneer Horizons, the horizon sets are the ones that introduce new cards. I would bet we're like two years at most off of a Pioneer Horizon set happening. Well, so in a in a world where nerfs are done well. Nerfs aren't actually going to cause rotations, right? Like, if a, if a digital format is managed properly with card adjustments, everything that gets adjusted is still going to be playable after it's changed. We have Black Swords next turn. This seems very good. Yeah, exactly. Good nerfs don't make cards unplayable, they just make them balanced. They should bring cards into, uh, expo uh, uh, into Historic that will slow it down like Ragavan and Saga. Is an Explorer eventually going to turn into Pioneer? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, Pioneer is almost assuredly going to get, like, Master sets at some point. All right, are we Diviner of Batesing first or Rafining first? I kind of like Rafining first so we can attack with us for Sentinel. If they, if they counterspell this, they probably can't because of Thalia, right? Discarding two spells here explicitly because I want this to go up to a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, I, uh, for what it's worth, I think Magic's non-rotating formats are better when they don't do things like Horizon sets, but Wizards definitely kind of figured out that they feel like they need to monetize those types of players, and the Master sets give them a clean avenue to monetize them. All right, so against a deck with counter spells and a lower curve, I think this is an Inquisitor Captain out matchup, huh? Thalia and Esper Sentinel are still... This matchup's a little weird... 
Because it's a matchup where Arthalia and our Sentinel are good, but our um, our creature removal spells are also good. Fragment reality seems absurd here. And I think I want a couple of Skyclave apparitions. Is it possible I want all four Skyclaves? I feel like I feel like there's a chance I want all of my all eight of my removal spells here. Maybe maybe we want to trim like a diviner or a fiend. Like the the value diviner gets probably isn't what this matchup is about, huh? Does that put me too low on discard outlets though? I have four, five, six, seven, eight, twelve. Is is fourteen discard outlets enough? I probably don't need to full combo to win a lot of games. What what if I go down? What if I go down a couple of boats and leave the diviners in? Just play try and play a more fair game where Grease Fang's just like a 4-3 a lot of the time. I think I think I like the idea of Diviner more than the combo. Hermit's actually probably okay. So let's do this. Let's just be like Esper, Esper mid-range creatures. It's not amazing, but I think it's in the range of keepable. Is a nice pickup. Hey, D20. Thanks for the over four years. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday. And if you do follow us this morning, welcome to folks who been in for the first time. If you're not familiar with my stuff, I stream full-time here on Twitch. I do Magic the Gathering, other card games and strategy games, playing a lot of Marvel Snap and Pokemon Unite in addition to Magic lately. Um, I don't usually stream on the weekends, but I was off most of the last week on vacation with the family. I streamed a little bit of live time this Saturday and Sunday. Usually I'm here uh, Monday through Friday, like 9 to 3 during the week. I think getting Rafine down here as a blocker has a lot of upside. To ship with the Thalia, get this Parahelion into the bin. Make them have to respect the possibility of Grease Fang next turn. But with them missing a land drop, they're probably just torched. Tried to make a go of Historic Brawl, but there's just too many people that all they do is queue up with, like, mono blue all counterspell decks, and it's just, like, not particularly engaging or exciting. Like, in a, in a format that I'm going to play for fun, I really don't want to play against all counterspells. Alright, let's do one more with Esper, and then we'll flip on over to a second format for the day. Can't decide if I want to try alchemy today or not. Maybe we will do an explorer deck. Let, let's let chat vote. All right, you have three minutes, chat. You get to pick if we do alchemy or explorer. Don't ask me which deck we're playing in which formats, because I haven't decided yet. You, you pick the format. Uh, yeah, this is, this is fine. Hold on, the captain.
Incubation Dread makes me think Thalia might be good, but playing Hollow Blade means if we get a little lucky and spike the uh, Perihelia next turn, we get to just get them. Our opponent is a coward who cannot block warriors. That's why we attack before we play our card. We make it a free play damage in. Thalia. Uh, maybe we turn Grease Fang into a random, actually. I'm upset because my vote moved Explorer from 69% to 70%, but I guess I'll live. <laughs> All right, 60 seconds left, barring a last minute ballot dump. Looking like a, like an explorer kind of morning. Uh oh, someone's dumping ballots for alchemy yet. Uh oh, uh oh, someone's looking to rock the boat. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat, don't tip the boat over. Um. To play here because it's a 4 3. If I attack with this, they could trade their resplendent angel for it, but I think that's a good trade for me, so I'm gonna offer it. Yeah, okay, because they can play a land and activate resplendent and get in here now. Look at that 50,000 channel points from Jareth's. Alchemy wins by a margin. Look at that. It is not an explore morning. The voting has spoken. So 26 months, talks me. Remember, chat, if your candidate didn't win, you need to be a good loser. And being a good loser means no coups. Right, discard Thalia here to try and find a different creature. Unsuccessfully. I dumped avocado post points into both options because I'm a shillionaire with too much money. God bless. Normal people hate him. It's going as wide as possible around this angel. There's something ironic about the fact that I just didn't vote because I assumed Explorer was going to win. <laughs> and let this be a lesson to everybody at home. There are midterms this fall if you live in the United States. Primary has already happened in lots of spots around the country. Make sure your voter registration is up to date. Remember, chat, it's 2022 and only you can stop fascism in my country. Turn Grease Fang into a random friend here.
All right, they go block, block. They take six, eight, 11, 12. I think that's a good trade for me, right? Let them eat this and this. I die on the backswing though. I'm dead on the backswing anyways though, right? Not true. It's actually not, not true. Pull in pass, I think. I can't cast her feet, and I don't have a blue mana. Otherwise, yeah, her feet would be great. We're like exceptionally bad at drawing, uh. Drawing our boat. Okay, so do I take the, use the abandoned mire, hope to mill into a boat line? Definitely seems like our route to victory here. Thanks. I assume we're just torched at this point, right? Like they've got Resplendent Angels, just infinite mana. Oh yeah, picking up Sentinel is better there. It doesn't matter, we're dead though. You're you're correct. If we weren't dead, it was better to pick up Esper Sentinel. All right, anti spells out, anti creatures in, click submit. We'll uh, try and draw a, uh, a boat in the top half of our deck this time around. Okay. As five card hands go, could definitely be worse. Yeah, the Carnage Tyrant era of standard is kind of like one of those ones you point to where it's like, yes, magic players will actually ask for literally anything to be banned at any point. 
Even even in good formats, they are not happy. Yeah, I wonder what the opponent's deck is going on in it that has them playing uh, Historic over Explorer. We haven't we haven't seen any cards that aren't Explorer legal, right? Out of them. Ah, uh, yes, the classic. Planner Cleansing Great Henge deck. <laughs> a true, a true classic. Diviner first, right? And then extra week ago, Shredder into Hollow Blade. I guess this is only drawing me more Paralyons. I, I, uh, what's it called? We, uh, we got rid of Esper Sentinel. Oh, if I would have discarded a, oh, it's fine. They're going to life flick this turn anyways, right? I should, I should have discarded a spell though to give this a counter. Block is free, basically. It's Divider of Fates replaces the card. Man, we're going to lose this game because there's an Ancient Ziggurat in my deck, I think. Casting this on 8 might be too slow anyways, but we can't cast it on 8 because of Ziggurat. I mean, planner cleansing's really good if their opponent floods out after uh, after they cast it. They they drew zero lands after they cast Pan planner cleansing, and we've had nothing but so. It's just how it be sometimes. This is I know I know games like this suck to lose chat, but like games like this are the reason why most people play Magic. It's because you can show up with your Planner Cleansing Conclave Tribunal deck, and like variance means you can still get on the scoreboard. It's uh, it's very much a feature, not a bug. Like people people always talk about like these games sucking, but a, a big part of the reason a lot of people play Magic is they can make questionable decisions like that and still feel rewarded and paid off through the variance, right? If people, if people didn't want a high variance game, they would play something like chess instead. I think I had enough Grease Fang for me though. This deck seems very good, but it's also kind of dry and boring. I got out, like, I didn't feel like we really outplayed people in any of the games. Like, basically every game we lost looked like that last match where we just, like, flooded out and died. And almost every game we won, we just, like, 
did Grease Fang with Perihelion. So, if you want to farm ladder points, this seems like a fine choice, but this deck definitely didn't make my brain happy or make me excited to play Magic.